I'm finna do music. I said, you finna do what? He said, I finna do music. I said, what you know about some music? And then he said, well, I'm gonna do this with Dre and, you know, make this, this group and make this music. And he gave me like uh, a couple of ounces of crack. And he said, man, I'm out, man. You, I ain't doing this no more. I said, well, I took it and I said, good luck, buddy. I'm gone. I kept doing it. So being affiliated in the dope game, of course he knew people from everywhere because he dealt with all type of people from all over. You know what I mean? And that was basically his, his street affiliation. You know what I'm saying? So he was a real cat from the street, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? People who know, know. Mind you, this is like 89, although Eric has started his label in like 86, 87. He really didn't focus on acts that he signed. He was more focused on putting out the Easy Does It record and the NWA Straight Outta Compton record. And when that blew up, now, you know, his label was established and now he's ready to, you know, put out other artists. And um, he told me they was tripping and they threatened him. Uh, and I couldn't believe that, you know, but it wasn't Dre, you know. So I couldn't believe, you know, like, no, nah, not Dre, like, nah, Shug and his people and all of that. Basically telling, because Shug actually came up to Easy and put his arm around him and then they walked off and Shug was like basically trying to threaten him a little bit. So me and my brother walked over there and Michael Conception seen us talking, Snoop mobbed up. And so Michael Conception was like, man, this ain't the time and place for that. So well, actually when we went outside, we thought they was gonna try something, so we sent one of our homeboys back to back over here to Watts, and he brought like seven guns. You know what I'm saying? Brought the guns back. We all got a pistol. We stepped outside and we we pushed up on Shug and him like, "What y'all want to do? We thought y'all wanted to do something." You know what I'm saying? The city G's, the real motherfucking G's. We didn't want to present Compton as a gangster town because it's not. It's a there's beautiful homes and neighborhoods there, and uh, that's why. I uh, brought in the helicopter and, and did the aerials of Compton and showing these beautiful neighborhoods. And, and that life's awesome. It, it's beautiful there. And, and uh, I wanted to present Compton in, in a very good light. You know, he was just ahead of his time, the guy. I mean, that's what the Ruthless Radio Show was really about. Unfortunately, we started in July, July 4th weekend of 1994, and he passed away March of 1995. So we didn't really get to get it off and then he was sick the last three months of it so he didn't he only really caught like five six months so at that time they made it official that easy was in the hospital now remind me that at this time he was uh very sick and from what we gathered he was signing a lot of paperwork the paperwork that he was signing is not, in, it's, not in, it's not a secret uh, he was signing different documents pertaining to the run of the company. Last time I had talked to Toka, we, you know, we used to go down to Mexico with him, and uh, he was saying how he spoke to him and said, uh, get him out of here, he didn't want to be in the hospital. Because remember, I think they were the only ones that really got, did you get to see him when he was in the way? Yeah, I think they, they were the only ones that got to see him before they moved him to that last room. Because remember, they moved him twice, they moved him like in the middle. What the fuck is that about? Yeah. Man, come on. What is that? That makes no damn sense. You hiding, you hiding somebody in the hospital from who? His fans? Motherfuckers that love him? You know what I'm saying? We was all on one floor. The fools was in the hallway crying and everything, and he wasn't even on that floor no more. Yeah, that was gangster. Uh, and he was a visionary. He was a great visionary. And I just think it's so tragic that he would be taken from us on March 26th of 1995, and I myself have never been satisfied with the facts surrounding his, his, uh, his death. There's a lot more things that went on. The reason why we have the industry that we have, you know, in a whole, is because of Easy E. It's part of, he's a part of that, you know. I, I witnessed that, I lived that, you know, and I want people to know that industry period not just gangster rap just period urban music as it is today he's a part of that you know give him his credit give him his props don't look over him and give other people props before you give it to that man this is a story of easy e 
godfather of gangster rap. This is a story to give us a better perspective of his life, his personality, how he was on a day-to-day -day basis, how he interacted with his business associates, with his artists, and with his family and friends. I'm, I'm a big Easy e fan, one of the biggest Easy e fans you can possibly imagine. And this is what I wanted to hear, to see, to learn about. And by creating this film, I have learned a lot into his personality, his life, his lifestyle. And it's a lot of interesting stuff, and I know you are, you're all gonna love it. You know, rest in peace, Easy e This is for you. Your memory and legacy lives, lives on forever.